All right. Well, good morning, everyone. This is Brian, and we're here for Forex Live. Today is Thursday, November 14th, 9 a.m. Eastern. We just had some news a little bit ago, so it uh, should make for an interesting uh, trading trading morning. And uh, before we get started, as always, um, let's put up the disclaimer, get through that, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do for the day. So uh, disclaimer is here. We always have to let you know. Well, I thought it was here. I had it open just a minute ago. There it is. Uh, disclaimer. So we have to let you know that unique experiences and past performances do not guarantee future results. I think everyone here understands that. We're all adults. We know that there are no guarantees, and um, you know, but we'll do the best we can to to make some pips. Uh, trading does involve risk, and we should um, only trade with risk capital. If we're not trading with uh, true risk capital, then uh, we're going to be making some decisions around that money that could uh, cloud our judgment. So. Um, make sure we're always trading with risk capital. And then, of course, um, you know the trades that we're placing um, have no guarantees. We're, we're placing trades. I'm placing them based on uh, my interpretation of Forex Joe's daily trading methodology. And uh, he'll be on a little bit later, perhaps, to, um, to give us some additional information as well. But we're here for training. This is an opportunity to train, talk about Forex Joe's trading methodology, and show how we can apply that under uh, current market conditions. So with that said, uh, let's go ahead and close down this disclaimer. I know most of you guys have that memorized already. And uh, let's jump into uh, see what we can do for sign finding some trades. Um, of course, everyone should have open a couple of different things. We need to have our, our trading terminal open. So, um, you know, whatever broker you choose to use, a MetaTrader broker anyway, have that open. Have your uh, 21st Century Forex Trader software installed. Uh, we're going to be using the, um, the pending order software today. So from your templates, you could use... Um, either FTT Pending Order Pro or just the regular Pending Order Pro, depending on how clean uh, you want that chart to look. So we should have that open. Uh, second thing that we should have open is um, a, a browser window where we'll have our daily report and our... Oops, sorry, I thought I had... Uh, uh, so we'll have our daily report open. We'll have our uh, member site open, so um, you've probably already read through your alert for the day. And uh, should also have open our daily trading regimen, which I thought I had up. I don't know what happened to it just then. So let's go back and see if we can find that daily trading regimen. Uh, we'll be walking through for the day um, our daily trading regimen file, um, which looks something like this as soon as this pops up which is Forex Joe's checklist. He created a checklist for us um, that just kind of keeps us uh, keeps us moving in the right direction, keeps our fingers off the button, and makes sure that we uh, capture all of the appropriate um, information prior to entering a trade. So we should have that open. And then, of course, prior to class, you've probably already reviewed the uh, Forex alert and uh, all of Forex Joe's commentary for uh, what's happening in the marketplace. So those are the things that we'll be using for the day. Um, I'm going to focus on the daily report and the daily trading regimen. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. First thing we'll do, we'll start with the euro. And uh, with the euro, we are currently trading. So this is the euro USD. And we are currently trading at 134.58. 134.58. And uh, so now we're going to start gathering some data, filling out our daily trading regimen. So uh, let's see how that goes. Hope you guys were with us on uh, Tuesday. We had a really great day on Tuesday. The trades we placed um, ended up netting about 140 some odd pips for the day. Um, you can check out the replay if you missed it in, in the uh, YouTube channel. We always record a, a replay um, following our morning class. So uh, there's always a replay on the YouTube channel out there if you want to go back and, and review all of those. So, you know, win or lose, we, we put one out there and just show you what we've done. All right, so channel information. So we're pulling up the daily report. We're checking out our channel information. We're, uh, we're concerned about what's happening right here. So we see that we have a channel bottom at 34.37, and we have a channel top at 35.42. So we're always beginning with the daily information. Uh, then we might look beyond that and see if we have any agreement on uh, mid-term or long-term channels. And uh, looking here at the channel top, there's no alignment. Uh, down here at the channel bottom, we do see 33.29 is a two of three channel, but uh, not something that we'd be too concerned with today. 
if uh, somehow we did get a big run and this thing pushed and we got down to 33.29, we'd be obviously watching that channel. But right now, under immediate conditions, this isn't really a number that we'd be too concerned about. All right, next up, support resistance information. Well, we're trading at 34.58, so what's closest to us? Well, we've got uh, 34.56. So 34.56, kind of a decision point for us. That's a support resistance level. If we break down, we've got 34.42 and then uh, 34.22 below that. And um, if we go to the upside here, we have 35.12. And then uh, following that, we have 35.42, which um, also is in alignment with that channel top. So we put a little star there. It gives it a little extra oomph if, uh, if the price gets to that level. Uh, next thing we want to know, are we trending or oscillating for the day? What's happening here? Well, you know, it looks like for the day, you know, since Tokyo's session, we've been in a pretty steadward, steady out downward trend. Uh, we did just have some news a little bit ago that, that pushed us up, caused a bit of a blip here, and uh, we'll, we'll look at that a little bit more uh, later. But as far as trending, yeah, we're trending. Has the channel been broken? That's always a big question. Have we broken above 35.42 or below 34.37? Uh, 3437 is right down here. Bing. So uh, yes, the answer there is we have we have broken the channel. Yes. Uh, next thing we want to know: average daily range. Well, today's range is about 70 pips. We've moved about 70 pips for the day, and um, average range is kind of skewed. We've gotten into a market where we're starting to move again, so it's going to take a while for this to. Uh, to really begin to shake out, but um, you know, ra average range, uh, shorter term, you know, we're looking 88 pips on the two days, 76 pips on the five day, uh, 70 pips here on the 130 day. That's because we're, you know, looking back longer term. We, you know, the market's consolidated during the summertime, so uh, we know that range was 70 to 80 pips during the summer, and and then to the the shutdown. Now um, we, we look like we might see some movement coming into the end of the year. Uh, back to what this pair would normally do, which normally it's in that 100 pip range, 100 pips. All right, so um, so somewhere, so I guess you know it's kind of a wide range, but we're somewhere between 80 and 100 pips. Um, next up is news. So uh, the other thing we'd want to have open on our browser is a news source. So um, you know I use forexfactory.com. There's a lot of other sites out there. You might use. Uh, I know a lot of people really like to use FX Street, um, but whatever your news source might be. Uh, there's some uh, uh, some good opportunities out there. All we're really concerned with, we're not really concerned with the news as much as we are with um, as, as we are with um, when it's occurring. So uh, what we look here is we, we pull up this report and we look through our red reports here. So we're looking for the ones that are color coded red, which are the high impact reports. And we just want to make note: is there anything um, from this point on today that should concern us? Uh, any any kind of news that would um, you know that we'd want to take note of that could be a potential uh, market changer that could be a potential direction changer for the market and uh, yeah we do we have news coming up at 10 a.m. so that's here in about an hour uh, we have um, our our designate Fed chairman uh, that's about to, uh, to 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 give a speech so uh, this could be interesting we could see you know depending on on uh, what she says, there might be some, uh, you know, some whip in the marketplace. Let's uh, let's let's keep our eye on that. Um, so, uh, although I don't think there'll be too much going on, uh, we just had news a little bit ago. I, I find this number funny. Wow, how did we increase unemployment claims when we added so many jobs this past month? <laughs> anyway, um, then the next thing we want to know is uh, what's happening. So, so back to news. Uh, we just we're just concerned that we do have news coming up. What, what's already occurred has occurred. We're not too concerned about what's already occurred. Um, you know, we can see that on our charts. Um, then we just want to know what news is going to occur so that we don't step in front of it. I mean, it's, if news is going to occur at 10 and it's a major announcement or a major speech or something of that nature, we probably don't want to jump into a new trade at, at 9:55 or 9:50. You know, um, so. I want to want to make sure we're cognizant of that so that we don't increase our risk by being in at the wrong time. Uh, and then finally, the last thing that we'll capture here is uh, the futures market. Uh, we pop over. I, I like to use finviz.com forward slash futures. So finviz.com, click on the futures tab, and it gives us a really nice heads-up dashboard on uh, what to expect for the day, uh, what's happening in the futures as they're currently being traded. Now, right now, it's mainly electronic trading. 
the uh, the pit traders don't come on until um, about another 20 minutes, 8:30 Central. So um, right now this is mainly electronic. There are there are some pits that are open, but uh, right now electronic trading and it's showing a slight slight lean to the positive side. Crude uh, gold is up, Dow's up, silver's up, crude's down slightly, but overall kind of a, a positive positive lean to the futures. Now when we see a positive lean to the futures, typically we see a negative uh, U.S. dollar. So uh, as money flows into the futures market, it flows out of dollars, um, and then it flows into the futures market. I'm sorry, it then flows out of the futures market, it flows into dollars. So if we see futures going down, we see dollars going up, we're cashing out positions and holding them liquid in U.S. dollars. Then we take these dollars and we put them back in to various positions along here. So if you're seeing a lot of green across the board, typically we see red in the U.S. dollar. And then conversely, if we see uh, red across the board, you'll see green in the U.S. dollar. And I say across the board, typically we're, we're most concerned here with what's happening with Dow, crude, gold, silver. Those are the, really the main drivers. But today, it's a little bit of an anomaly, right? We've, we've got positive uh, futures, positive gold, positive silver, and positive dollar. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's interesting. You know, so that's, that's one of those things that just tells us, hey, we need to be cautious and, uh, and, just, and just watch what's, what's occurring here. Now, it could be that we had some, some negative news, and, and you know, we'll, we'll see. We don't know. I guess so. We just we, we can't really assume. We just have to watch to see what's going on. Typically, though, when you see um, the Dow positive, crude positive, gold, silver positive, and the dollar positive, uh, that's an anomaly, and, and we have to be careful because it's going to whip uh, one one way or the other. We don't know which way it's going to go. One of these is going to is going to pop. So we just um, we need to be careful with that. So if anything, this is just telling us right now to take caution until we until we see some other trading opportunities. All right, so we gathered a lot of information. We've got our, our current price, our channel information, our support resistance levels. Uh, we know if the market's trending or oscillating. We know, uh, you know, if the channel's been broken, what our average range is, and where we are within that range. And uh, then we know what the futures market is doing as well. So now we've got a lot of information here, and uh, we're we're back to a point where we can start to look for potential trading opportunities. So what do we have? Well, we've been in a downward trend. The dollar been strengthening for the session. Uh, you know, for the uh, for the current daily session, I should say, for the U.S. session, it's you know kind of mixed. We're just getting into it. But you know, over the Tokyo and London session, we had been weakening until news, or I'm sorry, strengthening the dollar until news. So now, what are we going to look for? Well, let's put some let's let's just kind of see where our our channels exist and where they are. So uh, we're going to reduce the chart a little bit here so we can see all of our uh, all of our various numbers. We've got our channel bottom at 34, uh, 34.37, which we've already marked here. And then we have our channel top at 35.42, which is actually way up here. 35.42, there it is. Have a channel top right up here. Um, then we had 34.56, kind of a decision point for us where we were currently sitting, 34.56. So let's mark that one as well. That was right about here. And what else do we have? We've got 3442, which is actually a thermal grid level as well. And we have 3512, uh, which actually is quite a bit above us way up here. I think if we compress this channel a bit, as Forex Show tells us, we need to... Uh, Compress the channels, compact and compress the channels under live conditions. We might actually see another level, um, which actually is a, a thermal grid. We see one right through here. Um, and if we, if we compressed a little bit more, we'd see a level right through here. And not really. It's, yeah, that's, that's decent. All right. So now we've, we've got our information. We've got our levels. We... Um, we're able to see, you know, kind of where the uh, where the where the futures market is. We know what the the dollar has currently been doing. Uh, we know what news had come out. We know what uh, you know, kind of what drove this this change in direction here, at least a slight change. So now we here we are to place some trades. Now what do we do? Well, we've got news coming up in 45 minutes, so we don't have a lot of time. So we're going to have to look more towards a scalping style trade, something that we can get into and then take profit very quickly and then, um, you know, get out of prior to that 
news event coming up here in a bit because that's that's definitely going to whip around. So if we if we need to place a trade right now, right this second, and we don't want to wait until after news, it has to be a much shorter term trade. So uh, what we would do is we'd play within this channel uh, right here. So we've got 34.56, which was a support resistance level from Forex Show's report, and we've got 34.42 which is a support resistance level from Forex Show's report. So what we would do is um, we could play directly off of those and uh, look for, for trading opportunities here just like this. So we just simply you know, grab our, our green lines for buys and we'd move that down to the, uh, to the level we'd want to trade from, set our take profit levels, and again, very, very quick for take profit because um, we're not going to have a lot of time. We would expect with news coming up, uh, especially, um, you know, kind of unknown news, it, it shouldn't be really a huge event. It's just going to be, but you never know. You never know, you know, if she says something that, you know, might might give some indication of her direction um, in the marketplace, then um, you never know what, what might occur there. I'm going to take the ADR off of here so you guys can see where the where the I, I see what that fellow was saying on non-farm payroll we should probably move the numbers the the text that's on those lines maybe out here somewhere anyway total total sidebar so um, all we do so we, we move our we move our green lines for the buy entry and move them down to where we'd like to be and then we can click move to buy oops double click it and then just simply click and drag it, move it to buy, and that'll set a buy order. And then we can do the same for a sell. We can go up here to this, uh, you know, 3456 area and look for a selling opportunity. And uh, again, take profit very quickly. We're just going to look to scalp a couple of pips off of these. We're not looking for any major moves because we're trying to get something prior to uh, to the news announcement. If that occurs, great. If not, we'll we'll just shut it down. We'll wait to trade after news. And we'll see, which is actually the, the much safer play. It's much safer to wait until after the news and uh, and make a trade. But let's just go ahead. If we had to do it right now, say there wasn't any news coming up, we could look to these levels um, to, uh, to to buy and sell off of. So um, here we go. We've got that on. Once the sell order is moved where you'd like it to be, you simply click move to sell. And then it takes just a second, clicks that in. Now we have a pending order for a buy and a sell, bracketed into this um, into this uh, this range right here, where we'll probably see price set. I mean, major news coming out 45 minutes. Uh, I don't really see a lot of lot of direction occurring until uh, after that starts, and, and you know some of the some of the uh, keywords are thrown around that will cause you know blips and and you know market moves. All right, so there we have that. So we'll put that on. Uh, let's do this again. We'll do it again on the pound USD. And then we'll finish it up on the Aussie USD. And let's do the yen today. Let's do the, the USD yen today. So we'll do the, the pound USD, and then um, then we'll, we'll complete it with the US yen. All right. So we're going to go a little bit faster because we've already done one, so there's not a reason to, 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 to have quite as much commentary the second time around. So we'll go a little bit faster for the pound USD, and then we'll kind of go full speed through the US yen, and, uh, and get that one put on as well, just to show once you've once you've done this for a while, it actually can be done very quickly. You can go through your currency pairs, whatever pairs you trade, uh, really in about 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes, get your trade set, and then everything else is done for you. Once the once the trade is on, the software manages this trade for you uh, by ensuring that your your profit is taken off the table, and then there the profit is locked in by moving break even to uh, or by moving your stop loss to break even plus one. So um, great way to great way to trade it, and um, it can be done very very quickly, allowing you to go do other things with your day once you've done your homework and set your trades. All right, so the pound pounds trading at sixty seventy one sixty seventy one. I'm just rounding up uh, sixty sixty seventy. All right, sixty seventy. We're currently trading at channel information tells us here that we've got a there it bump. All right, we've got a three of three channel. So uh, channel bottom, 60.44 on the pound USD, and then a channel top at 61.55. Now the first thing we notice is that here our 60.44 channel bottom is actually repeated 
It's a it's a daily channel bottom, a weekly channel bottom, and a monthly. So short term, mid term, and long term channels are lining up at 6044. That's a major level for us. Now next up, support and resistance. Well, let's capture those. What do we have? We're currently trading at 6070. So we have 6100 above us and 6044 below us. So pretty uh, pretty good channel there. You got a whole number, 6100 whole number, and then you've got 6044, which is a uh, very strong channel bottom that's lining up. So uh, there we have. If we break through 6044, then we've got 5999. If we break above 6100, we've got 6137. Are we trending or oscillating today on this currency? Well, looks like we're uh, we kind of chopped very, very tight channel during Asia, and then uh, looks like here during during this London session we had a, a pull down right to 6100 or, or 6000, and now it's uh, it's been it's been pushing up since. So um, looks like we're in a bit of an upward trend. Put this should have updated my template. All right, so a bit of an upward trend for the for the day. So we are trending up. Has the channel been broken? Have we broken 60.44 or 61.55? And the answer there is yes, we did. Uh, we broke 60.44. It uh, really hovered right right around it and uh, you know broke down. So um, the report came out here at the close of the U.S. It pushed through 60.44. Really struggled here. Finally, it broke it. Closed below. Came back, retested, 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 and then broke down, um, down to, to 6,000. Now off of 6,000, the whole number, it's now bounced back up. But anyway, channel been broken. Yes, channel's been broken. Average range. Uh, today we've moved 100, 100 pips. A uh, typical range prior to this, uh, you know, limited movement for the summertime session, we were uh, typically sitting in that about 110, 10 to 115 pip range. Uh, yesterday it moved about a what did we move yesterday? Yesterday was a big day. What did we go? 130 plus, 140 plus. Yeah, wow, 180 pips yesterday. It moved definitely outside of, uh, of its typical range. Uh, news, we know that there is news coming up, yes. And what's the futures market doing? Probably not a whole lot. Um, since we looked at it last, uh, still kind of that mixed bag. So, you know, beware. We'll wait for that news to really to really drive this. So right now it's kind of a mixed bag. So what do we do for entries? Well, the obvious entry here is 60.44. Yeah, we've broken back above it. Uh, we're upward trend yesterday, right to 60.44. Now we've broken. We, we 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 resisted, resisted, resisted. Now we've broken through it and haven't retested. So um, my First inclination, we're trading above, is to buy uh, 6044. So that is uh, rule number one. Is we're going to go ahead and take that take that buy. Where is my buy stop loss? Must be hiding behind this one. Yeah, it is. All right. Sometimes if the um, if those if those stop loss numbers or some of your lines are, are hiding from you like this one was, he was hiding out behind that red one. You can just look over here and see where your stop loss is under under price bar, and then see if there's something covering it up. All right, so 6044, we've got that. We'll put it on. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep our our risk fairly fairly tight. We're not gonna risk you know 20 pips to make 10 or or make five. So we'll keep our risk fairly tight. We're gonna take our profit pretty quick as well, right here at this next level up. And then we'll uh, we'll take our last bid off uh, right up here around 6100 if we can get there. So um, I'm definitely looking 6044. We've broken above. We're an upward trend. You know, really strong uh, upward movement yesterday. Came right to 6044. Struggled at that level. Um, finally has broken above and hasn't come back to retest. So uh, I'm I'm looking there to buy 6044. Now, of course, we'll see what happens during the um, the news, and uh, you know, here in about half an hour, and um, we may have to take this off, and then depending on what happens with news, put it back on. But for now, this is what we're looking at: is 6044 to do a buy. I'm not even going to worry about a sell on this one 
at this point, I'm just going to park a buy on the pound USD. And then finally, we have the, um, the US yen. And again, doing our homework here real quickly, we're currently trading at 106. Finally broke through that 99.67. All right, so we're here at 100 points of 100.06. And our channel information is telling us we have a channel top at 99.67, and we have a channel bottom at 98.88. Now, 99.67, big number for us, right? Here we have. Uh, uh, two of th or three of three channels. It's lining up on a weekly, a daily, weekly, and monthly uh, term. So 99.67, big number. We had seen this quite a bit actually over the over this past year. Uh, we've seen 99.67 coming into play a number of times and uh, seen some some pretty large movements right off of that level. Uh, support resistance information. Well, uh, we've got we're currently trading at 100.06. So obviously we have 100, which is right where we are. As a decision point to the downside, 99.79, and then of course 99.67 below it. And to the upside, we have 100.45. Are we trending or oscillating for the day? Well, it looks like we're in an upward trend for the day. Has the channel been broken? Have we broken above 99.67 or below 98.88? And the answer there is a yes. We have broken our channel. As a matter of fact, um, here it is, 99.67 is here. Price pushed to it, uh, struggled right here, finally repelled off, and uh, then then pushed through, came back, retested it once, and then it's gone on. Uh, might be a great spot to look for a uh, for another buy if we pull back if we pull back a bit off of this level. Uh, average daily range. Well, we've got um, today we've moved 93 pips, and our average range. And our average range is um, well, a little bit lower, but uh, typically this, you know, we've been in the summertime blues, so it, it's made our range just a little bit lower. But typically this pair was in the 80 to 100 pip range prior to um, prior to the uh, the summertime news. Yes, we know there's news coming out. Uh, futures market yeah, still mixed. I doubt we'd see too much from that until the. Um, you know the the full uh, trading gets underway here shortly and probably through news. So um, let's see what we can find here. Um, first thing is is look to buy 99.67. So we're, we're of course going to look for a, uh, to buy on a pullback there. Uh, we are kind of approaching the end of our range already, so we can look at a, a sell up here if we if we can find some key areas as well. So um, of course the first thing we're going to do is we're going to park a buy at 99.67. So right there, we're going to park our buy. We're going to move our our uh, take profit um, right up here, and our second level of uh, profit taking right up here, and we will keep our stop pretty darn tight as well, and kind of right down here. All right. So um, and what I'm what I'm looking at for my stop is if we compress our channels a bit, we see um, you've got a support level that right down here. So um, I'm parking my stop right below it. I'm parking my entry at 99.67, which is a three of three channel. We're looking to take profit. Um, I'd like to stretch it out a little more than, uh, than just eight pips. I mean, we could, we could go you know, right here, seven pips to 99.74. I'd like to go a little beyond that, but you know, that's fine. And then you know, the second level of profit, I'm I'm just taking here at the high of Asia. We'd probably be safer to take it here at this uh, at this other support level that's been set up here. All right, so we've got that. We can put that buy on. And then the other thing to do is to look for uh, selling opportunities. And what do we have? Well, um, 145, 100.45 would be the next level from Forex Joe's report that we'd want to uh, potentially trade from. So. Um, you know, up here, I don't know, that might be a little ranged out for what we're expecting for the day. If we're looking top to bottom, and that's 120 pips. If it did get there, it'd uh, be a great spot to look for a for a reversal um, that's really exceeding what the average range typically would be for this uh, for this currency pair. 
So again, if we push that high, we can look to uh, keep our risk pretty darn low. Got to buy a new mouse for this computer. Keep our risk fairly low and uh, look to take profit pretty darn quickly. So there we have it. So um, we've got two of these two of these currencies that are trading the yen, so the U.S. yen and the pound USD, both have uh, major channels, three of three channels that are that are coming into play. So uh, really would not surprise me if uh, you know during during this uh, news announcement during the speech that we don't see price come back to those uh, those major levels and then uh, and then trade off of them but you know we have to we we'll have to see let's wait until what actually is occurring we don't want to get out there and make assumptions we start having a bias in the market it can also cause us to to, to kind of view things very one-sided and, and make some decisions that might be outside of what we would normally trade. We want to keep an open mind and, and look at trading opportunities for both buys and sells and not get too laser focused on, uh, on, on, on one direction or the other. And I know I, I say that and I, I only parked a buy on the pound USD. Uh, you know, I don't really see a lot of... Uh, a lot of opportunity here. I mean, if we did push up, we could look at 6,100 for a uh, for reversal, I and mean, that's definitely at the end of our range if we push that high. But you know, news coming up, I'll wait until after the news to uh, to, to evaluate that that level. I don't see it getting there uh, right now. All right, so there we have it. Um, there is our our trade. Those are our trades for the day. And uh, we've got them on, and I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, Forex Joe, I know you've been on. You've been typing a bit in here. I haven't looked at the chat yet. So um, obviously we can turn it over to you and uh, see what additional information you'd like to uh, impart for our, our members today. Uh, for any of you that are brand new, if you have questions about what I did, why I did it, please type them in. Ask. I'm happy to, uh, to share with you. I think I explained it you know, pretty, pretty well, pretty in-depth as we were doing it. But if there's questions outside of that, let me know, and we'll answer them. Yeah, good morning, Brian. Good morning, everyone. Uh, congratulations, Brian. Brian had a great day on class uh, a couple days ago, over 100-plus pips for those of you that were here participating. If you missed that, as Brian alluded to, he has the recap up. Uh, not every day we get over 100 pips. We kind of grind it out here, but he's doing a terrific job following this format. A uh, couple words of caution here today. Here in about 30 minutes, we're going to have the Senate Besides this Obamacare mess that's coming to a head, uh, you're going to see the Fed chair that opens up at the end of this month, uh, and the one that they're trying to appoint is Janet Yellen. She's going to be testifying in front of the Senate. Now, what's interesting about this is that the Senate Banking Committee is going to pressure her into providing an updated timeline for quantitative easing, ending the asset purchases as they did Bernanke earlier this year. When Bernanke talked about that earlier this year, the stock market went down and the euro moved. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here with this testimony today. And I'd be a little bit cognizant of that testimony if you're going to be trading here over the next few hours into the London session because of what's happening. Uh, she did re release a text. Uh, for her opening statement. She's very dovish. Uh, <laughs> that means that she's going to try to keep quantitative easing. She's talked about the fact that the unemployment is still too high at 7.3. So it'll be interesting to see what the anticipation will be uh, with what she will say and then what stocks will do. Now, currently, stock market is right around 15.8. So now they're talking about when is the stock market going to hit 16,000. I don't know if it'll be today, but it's going to happen. Those of you that's been following what I've been writing, uh, and especially roundtable member, members, know what my prediction is going to be for the Dow here by the end of December. But we need to be cognizant of today because, uh, you know, when Bernanke spoke earlier this year and he testified, he did set out a timetable for tapering. And then that had, like we talked about, a sell-off in stocks. But it'll be interesting to see if they do push her what she does say because 
She'll probably talk about tapering not going to happen until the first quarter of 2014, even though some of the hawkish Fed members have been speaking. In fact, Klosser, he spoke yesterday. He wants to <laughs> end quantitative easing as soon as possible and stop the purchases of these MBS uh, securities. So they're kind of a push and shove in the Fed of what should be best and what they're wanting to accomplish. So I think that this next couple of hours is going to be a, maybe a little bit bouncy and a, you know bounce around 25, 30 pips here and there. If you are scalping, pay attention, get in and get out. But if you're looking for any kind of long term here between now and the London close, uh, be a little bit cognizant of what's going to happen and, and with her speaking today. If anybody has any questions, you can type in any questions. I guess this is our final class for today. We'll be back next Monday. Uh, Brian has set a schedule up through, uh, I think, through January. Brian, I think you've only got one class scheduled next week because you're going to be traveling, so we may add a class next week. Uh, Kirk and I might add a class in the middle of next week and be uh, stay pay attention for that in case we do. So if there's any questions, Brian, I'll answer any questions. Other than that, the yen did hit 100. We've been talking about it ever since it went down to 96, 97. The journey's been kind of long. Uh, it did bounce off 100 the first time. In fact, where's it at? I just uh, we're back above 100 now. So yeah, we're back above 100. It did hit bounce off 100 the first time, so we're back on uh, to over 100 right now. I see 100.05. That's taken place. The Aussie dollar has come down. That's continued to come down, as we talked about here on our reports here of late. So we've had some pip movements uh, since non-farm payroll. We've talked about it in our updates. We've talked about it in roundtable. We've given you ranges. So hopefully everybody's generating positive pips. And if you're not asking questions, then we're just going to assume, and we all know what the first letters of assume is, don't make us one. Uh, we're going to assume that everybody out there is happier than a tick on a hound dog and are generating positive pips on a consistent basis. So the only way we can help you is allow us, help us to help you is by asking questions and participating. Brian, if there's any questions, I'll answer them. Other than that, I'll turn it over to you. We'll be cognizant of everybody's time. I'll be paying attention to what Yellen has to say today. Uh, I'll go ahead and not get a report until later on this afternoon. And uh, everybody have a great day. Back to you, Brian. Thank you very much, Forex Joe. So uh, yeah, we got a couple of trades that we've put in. This um, this euro's chopping around right here, uh, kind of regretting not not pulling off my my four pips when I had a chance. Um, we've got news coming up in 20 minutes now, so you know here in about another another five or six minutes, I'm going to deactivate my pound and uh, yen trades and wait for post news to put those back on. Um, if this uh, if this euro pops back again positive, I'll just, I'm just going to go ahead and peel it off. It's, it's definitely not, not uh, behaving the way I thought it would. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll get some profit if this thing pops back above. Just peel it off and then wait until after news. It's really really the, the best bet when you've got a major news announcement coming up is to just wait. Just just wait. Sit on your hands. Code do jumping jacks. Run around the block. Whatever it takes to keep yourself from uh, from jumping into trade and pushing it. And, uh, and just, just wait. Wait till after news and then make your trading decisions at that point. So, uh, yeah, that's it for class. That's it for this week. We have one class. So our Monday class typically is, is like we do every Monday. It's a, a really quick class. It's great for newbies. Uh, we go in and we talk about how to utilize the software to park trades. Then uh, we go into, uh, into depth and just look at our daily report and show how we utilize that to set it up for the week to look for major channels that uh, we expect to see um, you know that are, that are it's currently trading around at the beginning of the week. We would expect to see multiple times over the course of that of that week. So we like to go ahead and mark those channels, and then it sets us up for the remainder of our trading week. Um, so uh, yeah, that's it. Now um, I don't know if anybody is going to the Traders Expo next week. Um, we'll be out there just uh, you know kind of going to attend, see what's going on. But if um, you know anybody wants to meet up for a coffee, I'm I'm happy to sit down and chat with you for a couple of minutes. So um, yeah, there we have it, guys. Have a great one. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.